Today we're going to be talking about the difference between pressure canners, pressure cookers, and a water bath canner. If you follow along on Instagram, then earlier this week I asked you guys to send me all your questions about a pressure canner and what you guys want answered. The majority of questions were wanting a breakdown of what a canner is versus a cooker and I know there's a lot of confusion out there, especially if you're just now getting started. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll know what kind of canner you need to get started. First, we're gonna start with the pressure canners and both of these are pressure canners. A lot of you guys were, wanted to know what brands I use and which I prefer and things like that. So these are both Prestos. This one is the one that I started out on canning like five years ago and it is a dial gauge canner. And this one I got recently, it was a gift from either my mom or my papa, I can't remember who got it for me, but it is a weighted gauge canner. And if you are looking to buy a canner and you have not bought yours yet, I would highly recommend the Presto canner that has the, the weighted gauge, which is this one right here. I much rather prefer this one over the dial gauge, just because the dial gauge you almost have to like babysit it more, just because you have to watch the poundage on the dial gauge and you have to constantly adjust your heat to make sure that the dial gauge stays on the poundage that you need. And sometimes, especially if you're canning like meat and beans, things like that, they can go for sometimes an hour and a half. You get tired of looking at the dial gauge, so I much rather prefer this one. Just because there is no dial gauge, you have to watch, and this one, whenever it gets above 10 pounds, it just like releases the extra pressure, so it's constant at 10 pounds. I hope that makes sense. But if you're in the market for a canner, I would definitely recommend a weighted gauge over a dial gauge. But if you have the dial gauge, there's nothing wrong with it. It works perfectly fine. I still use mine, but I just use it way less often. And in this video, I'm not going to be going over like how to set them up or anything like that. That will be a separate video. This video is just to explain the difference between all of them. So this pot right here is a granite ware and it is actually a water bath canner, which this is like the cheapest water bath canner you can get, I'm pretty sure, besides just using a stock pot and this one was like twenty dollars i believe and it works perfectly fine i love how big it is just because most stock pots are a lot smaller than this so i prefer to have a water bath canner but it does have the rack down in here and i just want to go ahead and say that you do not have to have a water bath canner you can use your pressure canner so either of these as your water bath canner also you just won't put it under pressure if that makes sense and i can explain that and walk you through whenever i teach you how to use each of the canners Another really popular question was what can you can in each? A lot of people wanted to know which I prefer and it's not a matter of which one you prefer, it's what you need. So anytime that you're canning fruits, jams or jellies, pickles, tomatoes, salsa, things like that, you're going to use a water bath canner, which you can use your pressure canner like I said, you just won't put it under pressure. And all of those foods have high acidity levels, so they do not have to go through the pressure canning process. But things that you would can in your pressure canner that cannot be used in a water bath scenario. So you cannot water bath can these foods. They have to be under pressure in your pressure canner. So that would be like things like meat, beans, your vegetables, and broths. Those all have to be under pressure. And it's really basic once you get the hang of it. But once you start getting into recipes, it can get a little bit more confusing once you start adding more ingredients into the jars. But once you get started with the process, it'll become really easy to figure out which one you need to do, whether you need to pressure can or water bath can your items. Another question is, how do I know what size canner to buy? That can get kind of confusing because whenever I first bought my canner, I was really confused and this one right here is a 21 quart, so I thought that that meant I was going to be able to fit 21 quart jars of food in this pressure canner, and that is not the case at all. So this one is a 16 quart, and this one is a 21 quart. So what that means is that it can hold 21 quart jars of liquid. If you just take 21 quart jars and fill them with water and pour them into your canner, it can hold 21 of those. But you cannot stack 21 quarts in this pressure canner and you can't even fit 16 in this by one. using the canning racks so in this one i have two the other day i canned jelly jars and this canner can fit two rows of half pints so you would put this in the bottom of your canner stack your jars on top and you would put your second rows of jars on top of this one so that's how you fit your two rows of jars but your canner only comes with one of these. So you'll have to buy an extra one. I have a few extras just because whenever I do can, usually I like to get multiple canners going at once so it doesn't take as long. 
but they are super cheap. They're like $10, so if you do plan on canning bulk food, which I do, then I would recommend getting the extra canning rack. All that bulk canning means is that you will can a lot of one item at once. So honestly, you need to break down what you plan on canning and how much of it at once. If you have a small family and you don't plan on canning much at once, then I would recommend this canner. And also, I have not been able to find this canner in a 21 quart. Because I like this one so much, I was going to go ahead and buy a 21 quart. But I have not been able to find one. I've only been able to find this 16 quart. So I'm not sure if they make a bigger one in this brand. I did see another brand. It was a cheaper brand. And there wasn't very good reviews. So I didn't trust it and I didn't buy it. But I do trust the Prestos. The next question is, is they're kind of expensive. Is it okay if I buy a used canner? And it's perfectly fine if you buy used canners. So I actually bought two this past summer at yard sales and they're actually all American canners. And if you know anything about all American canners, they're it's super pricey. So one this size and the Amer all American brand is like $300. And this one runs about $80. So there's a really steep price difference, but I have not used those canners yet just because I have not had a chance to take them to our extension office yet. But I would recommend if you buy any used canner, so if you buy it at the thrift store, if you buy it from somebody else, you need to get it tested. And usually they can do that at your county extension office. At least that's who does it where I live here in Kentucky. So you can start by calling your extension office and if they don't provide that service, then hopefully they can direct you to who does provide that in your county. But you'll need to get it tested just because the seals can go bad, these dial gauges can go bad, so it all needs to be tested. But what to look for if you are buying a canner used is be thorough in looking at the pictures or if they let you look at it in person. You want to make sure that the bottom of the canner, so down here on the bottom, is not warped. Some people put their canners on gas, like camping stove, which I've canned that way before and actually like it, but you're not supposed to do that because it can warp the bottom of your canner because the heat gets so hot. So you want to look for that and make sure that the bottom is not warped in any way. And then you want to make sure that it has all the parts. So if yours has a dial gauge, you want to make sure that it has your pressure regulator. But I'll do a close up of this. There is two buttons on top of your canner, we'll call them. And one is silver and that is your vent. And then there is a black button and that is your safety valve or sometimes known as a pop off valve. So you want to make sure that your canner has both of those and you want to make sure that it comes with a canning rack. So all of these parts are replaceable, but that's just going to be more money that you're going to have to pay because having to buy each part does add up. So if you can, you want to go ahead and buy a canner that's got all the pieces and already intact. Another thing that you want to check whenever you're buying a canner is this rubber gasket on the inside. And you just want to make sure that it's not cracked or dry rotted because these do go bad. So I like to always keep one of these on hand just in case because you never know when it's going to go bad. So you're always supposed to check it before you can and just to make sure that it's okay and that there's nothing wrong with it because it can give you a faulty seal if it's bad. The next question is, is I'm so afraid to use one. How do you get over the fear? I was scared the first time that I used them. I actually hated using a pressure canner for like probably the first like 10 times I did it. But once you get the hang of it, it, you, it becomes second nature and you don't question it anymore. As long as you do your checklist and I'll explain all that whenever I set up the canner in the next video and stuff. But as long as you follow your checklist, everything that you need to do for safety, then you're going to be okay. These canners are not like they used to be back in the day. So like 1950s and so, those did blow up because they were not designed like this. But these are designed with safety in mind. So like I said, they have a black button or rubber thing on top. And that is your pop-off valve or safety valve. So before the canner blows up, that is going to pop off first and start letting steam out. So I actually tried finding a statistic on... How often pressure canners blow up and I could not find any just because everything that I found was people using a pressure cooker as a pressure canner and that this right here is a pressure cooker so it has a weighted gauge on top and it does look similar to a pressure canner it's made the same so the lid like locks on it has a rubber gasket in the lid so I understand why some people see the confusion in it especially if they've never done it before and they're just getting started. But everything that I saw that had blown up were pressure cookers being used as pressure canners. And as you can see, these are a lot smaller. These were designed for a small meal to be made in them quickly. So if you're trying to cook up a fresh batch of green beans and eat them done quickly, you can throw them in here and cook them. So as long as it is a small meal. 
but it is not meant to process jars of food. So everything that I found was pressure cookers blowing up and not pressure canners. So a modern version of a pressure cooker is like the instant pot and there are like electric pressure canners, but I personally don't trust them. I just feel like I can control these a lot more than those and I've never used them and honestly, I probably won't. So usually they're a lot smaller in size. So I don't have a review on the electric pressure canners. The next and last question is, can a pressure canner be used on the stove top? So it can, I have an electric stove and I know several people that use it on gas stoves also and have no problem. If you have a glass stove top, then you do need to see what it is rated for on the poundage because these get incredibly heavy whenever they are full of food and water. So you do need to check and see how much your stove is rated for and what it can tolerate. But I will say that we had a glass stove at our old house and I never pressure canned on it just because I didn't want to risk breaking it. So that is whenever I actually use the camp burner and that goes off of propane, which it even says in your manual to not do that. But I canned that way for several years and never had any issues. And I know a lot of other people do, but that is just a risk you take whenever you are using those kind of burners. And I just want it known that you can ruin your canner if you do that. But I'm not a professional and I'm not telling you to do that. This is just my opinion and what I've experienced. So do everything at your own risk and do your own research before you make any decisions. But to sum up this video for new canners, if you don't have a canner yet and you're looking to buy one, I would recommend the weighted gauge. So I would recommend this canner and it is the Presto brand. And I also have the Presto dial gauge. Honestly, Presto is the only brand that I can recommend. I've never used my All-American canners yet just because, like I said, they haven't been tested. So hopefully I can get that done soon and start using them. And this right here is a pressure cooker. You cannot can in it. So just know this is a huge no. Like you cannot can in that. That is made for preparing a small meal. As far as a water bath canner goes, you do not have to have one. You can water bath can directly in your canner. So if you are just getting started and trying to make this cheap, then go with the 16 quart canner, especially if you don't even know if you're going to like canning yet. Just go with the 16 quart canner and try it out. This one is like 80 or $90, so it is going to be your cheapest route for getting a canner and getting a good one because I do love this canner. This is now my favorite canner. So a lot of people are worried about the price of getting started with canning and it's not too bad. I just think of it at all as an investment and I got started with the cheapest stuff that I could. So I did not have a water bath canner for the longest time. I just got this like two years ago and this canner, like I said, my mom and my papa got it for me just this past year. So I started with this one and this one is over hundred dollars, I believe, but it's been good. It is very well loved and very worn out, but it still has a lot of life like left in it. But hopefully that answers your questions and clears up some of the confusion around what each of these are used for. But I will work on filming the setup and how to use these pressure canners in the next video. So if you're interested in learning how to can, then make sure you like and subscribe. But thank you guys so much for watching.